in these lessons, we're going to continue with the same technique we used in the last lesson, but much, much, much more simple. We don't need to do the complete grid. We just need one rectangle. And this is a great way of getting volumes into your drawing. So I will just start making a rectangle. This technique is perfect for making machines and vehicles. It also works if you want to make animals and stuff like that. Anything that has a volume. And I want the lines to be parallel to each other. So the line over here and down here should be parallel to each other. You can do this by just moving the ruler. The same as in the former lesson, I just extrude lines upwards. And you can do this on your own without the ruler. It's good to kind of practice it once with the ruler, but then you can do the same technique just using your free hand. Okay, so this is the basic shape and this is going to be a car. So I will make a little cockpit area here. So I will do another couple of lines. To the start and the end. I want this wind tree to be slanted. So I make a line that isn't exactly straight up, but a little bit to the side. And the same on the other side, and this has to be parallel to that line. And then I just do the same back here. So this is the actual base shape of this vehicle I'm going to do. And I'm going to add some wheels. And in the beginning I just make square wheels. And now I start not to use my ruler. I have as much lines as I need so I can just wing it. And then to get the volume of the wheels, I also extrude it in like this, keeping it parallel. It looks like a Minecraft car at the moment. So we're going to start to use this shape to make more lifelike looking car. So as with the last technique, I just make this round shape. Letting the circle cross at the middle of this square like this. When I draw, most of the time, I don't really have a plan. It's something that happens while I draw, I get all the ideas. This is kind of the basic thing. When I do the construction like this, I know that I'm going to draw a car. But I have no idea what will happen with this vehicle, what kind of driver it will be. For me, it's like each drawing is a little bit like a journey. I never know what will happen. And it kind of feels a bit relaxing not having the image in your head when you start. Whatever comes, it's like a surprise for me. If I have the fixed image in my head, it's always something I really can't reach. But being more relaxed when drawing helps my creative process, might help you as well. And it makes the journey more pleasant. Just start adding all the small details. And at this state, I often stop with the pencil and then I go directly with ink instead. You don't really need to go with the ink. You can do a complete drawing just in pencil as well and leave it in this half-formed state. It can be filled with charm anyway. The advantage of using ink is if you want to scan images, it's easier to get a good reproduction of ink drawings. Pencil drawing is more vulnerable. You can kind of smudge it with the hand, but the ink pen is kind of permanent. And if you use an ink that is permanent, you can also add the watercolors to it without it smudging. Nowadays, I mostly don't use the pencil lines at all because I don't really enjoy 
drawing things twice, but in the start it really can be quite nice to do it in pencil first, that you have the possibility to make alteration. And if you do something wrong, if you just continue and work with the drawing, no one will notice that some lines are not perfect. It's small imperfections that make drawings more come alive, more charming. Following just the straight lines will make the drawing not that fun to look at. It will be rather rigid. Now I can start add something more fun to draw. This is a process though when I don't really know what's happening. I just start with the shape and then I suddenly I just feel this car really needs a small elephant. It is not something I really think about, it's just something that kind of happens. If you don't come up with something, your mind is blank, you can always start with an image you like. For example, from art history, use that as a reference and then first try to just draw more or less everything you see in it. And then slowly starting exchanging aspects and parts of it. For example, if it's a, a classic drawing of a king, you can start adding modern stuff to it. You can always try to redraw other stuff at first to get the kind of imagination going. It's also helpful maybe just to sit down on a paper and draw random ribbles and see what happens. So for example, if you just do a short line like this and suddenly, oh, that looks like a nose and that looks like a mouth and kind of develop the random aspect of drawing. Everything doesn't really have to be perfectly planned. If you leave things to chance, something really interesting can happen. And the more you do it, you don't need to do that random thing. It's already in your system. You just uh, have to start drawing and something will happen. For me, it's like drawing is not only my profession, but it's also something that I really use as a meditation. For me, it's something that I really need to do in order to feel good. The best thing that I know is just going to a cafe, sitting down and just start drawing. And it's like the more you do it, the easier it will become. And it's very important not to get that feeling of frustration. Oh, this is not uh, going the way I wanted. I want it to be a perfect drawing, but no one is perfect. But by doing it over and over and over again, you will become better. And I also find it is a very good rule to try to finish each drawing. Not to start the drawing and then you feel, oh, I'm not happy with this. Try to finish it off anyway. You will get into that sense that you will always be able to finish the drawing. And that's very important if you want to work as an illustrator full time, that you know, okay, I will be able to finish it. Also in a sketchbook, it looks, it looks much more nice if every drawing is finished. So getting into the habit of always finishing. Because when someone look at the drawing, they don't have all the things that you have felt for this drawing. Oh, I'm not happy with this. Oh, the lines are wrong. They will see the drawing in another light and they might love the drawing. With this kind of perspective, you can always add another object beside it. Just follow this same kind of rectangle. So I want another car here, for example. I can just make it follow those lines. And it will kind of fit into this same world as this other object because it's follow the same rules like this. And doing like perspective like this, you don't just have to make a very complicated drawing. For example, if you want to draw a simple object like a pair of glasses, you can do the same thing, just making this kind of box shape. It's usable in a lot of ways, just thinking about objects in like boxes. If you watch the world, you can see certain things in your eye. You can see this box that is surrounded by it and it will help you kind of feel a sense of 
or the volumes that each object have. We have just been focusing on the line works. We have been doing characters. We've been doing perspective vehicles and uh, more of the technical stuff. But now we will see what will happen to the drawing when we add just a little splash of color. It will make the drawings come alive to a completely new state.